Hey everyone, in this video, I'll give you a brief overview of how I built a Videos Explorer app using Angular 17.2, Tailwind CSS, and the YouTube Data API. Now, initially, I built this app to showcase the View Transitions API, and you might have seen that video before, but there were some comments on that video that you would like to see the whole app and its code and how it's structured. So this video will do exactly that. Now it has all of the latest features like signals, signal inputs, component input bindings and whatnot. So watch till the end. And in case you are new, I'm Zoyab Khan. I'm a front end engineer. And on this channel, we build cool web projects with the Angular framework and we learn Angular along the way as well. So with that out of the way, let's get started. Okay, so let's start this video by first going through the package.json so that we can see on which version we have our Angular on. So if I zoom in a bit here, you can see that Angular core is on 17.2. And then we have the Angular YouTube player, which we use for embedding the YouTube player, 17.1. And below that, we can see that we have Tailwind CSS at 3.3.6. So if you're trying to build this app yourself, make sure that you have these latest versions. Okay, let's just go through the app structure a bit to see, to get ourselves familiar with the code. Now pages are basically components. So we just have two pages here. The first one, and let's zoom in a bit again, we have the videos dashboard. This is the main page where we have all of our videos arranged as a card grid, and there's sorting and filtering. And then we have the video view, which is basically the individual video player embed component. Okay, and then we have your services. Now the video service is basically the core service, which actually fetches all of the data from the YouTube data API. And then we have the YouTube service, which is basically just a companion for loading the iframe player for the YouTube embed. And then we have your standard app.component, app.config and app.roots. So that is pretty self-explanatory. All right, so let's start the overview with the videos service, which is basically the powerhouse of our app. And let's see how we get the data from it. So let's go in our video service. And you can see that this, this is basically our video service here. And the first thing you are going to see here is that we have injected the HTTP client because we are obviously using the HTTP get request to get all of the YouTube data uh, from the YouTube data API. And then we have a signal called videos here, which is going to contain our data or um, our videos in the form of an array. And then we have the constructor where we actually call the this fetch videos function. This is going to be called once when the app loads or when the video service initializes, okay, because it is provided in root here. Now let's go through the fetch videos function. Now for the fetch videos, the first thing we do is that we set our playlist IDs. Now the YouTube data API basically has a has an endpoint which takes in a playlist ID and it returns all of the videos for that playlist. So we need to specify the playlist that we want to lo load here. Now here I have specified some of my own playlists, just three or four of them. You can add more as you wish. You can even use mine if you want. The second thing you need is your API key. Now to get this API key, it is free and you can get it from the link that I have given in the description and also I will give a link in the card above. So it's really easy and YouTube basically provides about 10,000 units to be used in one day, which is enough for most of the developers needs. So here you get the API key and I have not shown it here because it's private, but you can add it here. All right. And then we form the URL using that API key. Uh, and you can see here that it has googleapis.com playlist items and then key here this is basically your key and then if you go further up, uh, ahead you can see that we return some parts that we need um, for the videos so we uh, return the snippet and we return the content details the snippet has the thumbnails and uh, the description and the content details has i think the video id which we needed for the uh, detail of the video now this max results is optional you can send it or you cannot send it it's up to you all right, let's zoom out again and uh, let's see what we uh, what, what we do below that. So below that, we create an array of observables using all of the playlist IDs. So for each of the playlists, we basically append the playlist ID to the URL itself and then pass it on to the HTTP.get function. This is going to return our observable that we need to call the API. And we create an array of the observables. So if there are four playlist IDs, we get four observables. Then we just create a simple variable to store an array to store the videos that we that are returned from the API request. And then this is the main thing. We use the RxJS fork join operator. So fork join basically it combines multiple observables, and when all of them complete, it basically allows us to listen to the results in the subscribe block. 
So we just pass in the combined observable array here and we get the results in the form of an array once all of them have completed. And once we get those, we just loop through all of them and we just set it to the videos array and then we just set that videos array to our signal. So at the end of this function, you can see that we have our video signal ready to be used in the component. So all of our videos data is has been basically fetched at this point. Great. Okay, so now let's go to the videos dashboard. Now there's a lot of template code here. So we're just going to hide the template for now. Let's just you look at the component code first. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice is that we have two inputs here. And you can see that we have the signal based inputs which has been released recently in 17.1. The initial value for the tag is all and the initial value for the sort is ascending. Now, where do these inputs come from? So these inputs come directly from the root parameter bindings. And this is also a new feature called the component input binding, which is a router feature. And it basically automatically maps your root parameters to your component inputs. To, do the, uh, to see how it works, you are need to go to the app.roots file. Now, if you look at the app.roots file in detail here, you can see that the path that we have is tag slash, this is the tag parameter, and then sort, and this is the sort parameter. So we are basically sending in two root parameters for this specific root. So whenever any of these changes, our inputs are going to be updated here, the signals. Then we have a list of our tags, which we want to filter on. Now these are used to show on the UI what options the user has to filter on. Okay, then we are just going to inject the video service. And of course, once you have your tag and your sort, we can just use the computed signal to actually show the videos on the screen. Within the computed, we just check whether we have the tag and the sort that we need. So if, if the tag basically is all, that means we don't need to filter anything. We are just going to return the video service videos. And the only thing we're going to do is we're just going to sort it according to the current sort. We're going to give a sorting function here. So if the sort is ascending, then we just do a minus b on the time itself. And then if it's not in the else case, we do b minus a on the time. This is going to sort it ascending or descending. So this is, this is sort of the default case, but um, this is the normal case where we'll have a tag to be applied. So if there is a tag, uh, we are just going to use the same signal that we have from the video service, but we're going to add a filter to it as well. Now you can see this filter actually filters on the description. I have all my tags with a hash before them. Uh, and that is how it works in YouTube as well. So I just check for that in that same format and I check if the description includes that specific tag, the current tag, I filter it on the same. Okay, and then I apply the sort, the same sort as we did here. And that's just about it for the filtering and the sorting functionality. Now you can see how simple this is just because everything is signal based and everything is reactive. Okay, so we have our videos that will need to be shown on the screen. Let's just go zoom out a bit and let's go in our template and see how our templates look. So if you look at our template, we have basically two parts. The top part is the nav itself, pretty simple and it has Tailwind CSS styling as you can see, nothing fancy, but below that is the content. Now this content has two parts to it. The first part, this is the top part and for the top part, you can, you have the tag selector and you have the sort button. And in the bottom part, basically you have your videos card grid. Okay. And within that we have your new control for new control flow using for loop. And we just loop through the videos signal that we, the computer that we are calculating below. All right. So let's open this up a bit. So each of these items are basically a card. And for each of the card, we have an image within it. The image we get from the video, the snippet, the thumbnail and the standard URL. So this I just got from, you know, inspecting the JSON that is returned from the YouTube data API and I just used this data and I added some styling to make it look good, the width and the height. And then the, for the date, I'm just using the published add parameter in the snippet and using the date pipe, which I have included here, as you can see in the imports. Okay. Um, but what is it actually going to be linked to? So you can see here in the router link for that specific card. So it's going to link to slash video slash the video dot content details dot video ID. So this is our second route, which is the detailed route. But let's uh, also see the uh, route, basically how it's defined for this because it's really simple. So if you go in app dot, you can see here that we have your video ID. 
and we have video slash the id parameter of that uh, youtube uh, video and it's linked to the component great now let's go back to the top section and see how that's implemented let's open up the top section here and here you can see that there are two sections one section is the tag the other section is basically the sort button so for the tag selector we are looping using the new control flow for syntax and we are looping through the static tags that we have defined here now you can change these tags according to your own set of videos you can also make them dynamic if you would like to uh, and each of these tags is basically uh, a link tag in html and we have a router link now this router link is important because when the root changes the filtering of the uh, videos is going to change so here we are going to just link to slash tag and then we are going to give the tag that has been selected here by the user and then the, for the sort we are just going to let it remain as the current sort that is active so we are only going to change the tag in this case but for the second button here this is also a router link tag and for the router link here we are going to let the tag remain the same as it is currently and signals really helps that because we don't have to keep some track of the current tag or the current sort we can just use the current value in this way so so the current tag remains the same but for the sort we have this logic that if the sort is ascending we make it descending and if the sort is descending then we make it ascending so simple toggle logic to change the sorting parameter now whenever any of these routes changes our signals here which are bound to our root parameters automatically change and once any of these changes our videos here this computed videos also changes if you're finding value in this video please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so that it can reach more people like you i also have a buy me a coffee page where you can support my content creation efforts the link is shown below now let's get back to the video so this all really nicely flows from you know the inputs right from the route parameter to the inputs to the video signals and the computed directly and to the ui so it's all really reactive and this actually makes sure that we have the least amount of bugs in the code all right so that sort of finishes the videos dashboard and let's now go to the videos view so if we go in video view let's hide the template here and let's zoom out a bit to see how it actually looks so you can see that we are injecting the youtube service here and this youtube service basically encaps the iframe loading of the youtube player so in that we have kept an api loaded parameter so let's go to the youtube service and see what it's all about you can see that we have a signal a boolean signal declared api loaded this basically makes sure that our script or the youtube iframe api is loaded only once and once it's loaded according to this constructor we set it to true so that it's not going to be loaded again and again so that's just the basic purpose of using it and a plus is that we can also use this api loaded in our template to check whether the youtube api has been loaded so that we can show the youtube embed player so let's go to video view here and the, and the second thing we need to see here is that we have the id signal here so you can see it is a required signal because if we don't have this id there would be no video to play so it is a required input signal here and this means that it does not need an initial value okay and we also inject the location so that we can go back in the browser all right so let's look at the template now and if we go in the template this is pretty self-explanatory this is the header it has a back button that's the only difference it's just going back in the browser history and the other things remain the same and the second thing is is the youtube player now this youtube player is basically the um, official youtube player and we import the youtube player module from here in the for this uh, standalone component so that it can be rendered here and here we just take the video id that is passed in from our component great so that's just about it and now let's see our app in action again and i'm just gonna add my api key so that we can see this and now my api key has been added so now you can see that our app looks really nice we can tag and the important thing to see here is that you have everything flowing from the root parameters here so if you click on material here you will see that the tag material changes here chat chat changes here sign up sign up changes here and all of our uh, state in the ui basically flows from this from these root parameters now this is a really a nice pattern to follow in your own apps as well all right and when you change the sorting you can see the sorting changes here as well you can see that everything works great so that completes the functionality of the videos explorer app 
Now the code for this is available for free on my buy me a coffee page. The link I have given in the description as well. Now once you get that code, all you need to do is you need to um, update the uh, API key uh, from the Google Cloud Console and you need to just update the YouTube uh, playlist IDs if you'd like to see some other videos and also change the tags if you'd like to match the videos uh, for it. So I hope you found this useful and uh, till next time, thanks for watching.